And we are here at the Global Business Forum. Penny Mordaunt now joins me. As you say, uh, David, she is the Secretary of State for International Development of the United Kingdom, but she's also the UK Minister for Women and Equalities. And in that role, uh, Minister and Secretary of State, you signed a new agreement uh, that you will use one of our indices to actually, I guess, you know, force companies in the UK to be more transparent. Do they want to do that? Well, we have introduced uh, gender pay gap reporting. It's the, it's the most advanced reporting uh, of any nation on earth. Um, we've had 100% compliance with that. Um, we introduced it earlier this year, and it's been absolutely fantastic. And it's really important that we have transparent data on this. It's important for investors. Um, they're going to want to know which companies are performing well on that front because actually they're more profitable if they do that. It's really important for consumers who care about this to choose which uh, products to buy, but it's also important for uh, prospective employees as well in choosing a good employer. So we, we like this and we're delighted that Bloomberg has adopted uh, our, our metrics um, uh, for its own index. And I think that will be a complete game changer uh, in, in creating a, um, a global standard uh, for measuring um, how diverse our organizations are. So does it actually concretely narrow the gender pay gap and how quickly can you see that? Well, what it does, it, there, are, there are 14 data points, which sounds a, a huge burden on organizations, but we've produced this actually in consultation with them. And what it does is it enables them to really see the causes for their gender pay gap in their organization. So it's, you know, there's no point in doing this uh, um, just to put the information out there, although it does help investors and consumers. What we're also trying to do is help those organizations close uh, that, uh, that pay gap. And that's really important because I would say every human endeavor everything we're trying to do, whether we're a charity, whether you're a government department or a business, um, diversity of thinking is absolutely critical to, to getting the job done. So this is really, this is about performance of those organizations as well as fairness. Do you still have pushback? I mean, why are we still talking about this in 2018? I think because it's a complicated issue. It's, there's not just one factor uh, that, uh, or one um, poor practice that, that uh, creates that gender pay gap. We have to write from school, um, tell girls uh, they can do anything that they, they feel they have the talents to, to do and not be pushed into uh, a particular career path. We've got to ensure that we've got uh, HR practices in place that support women who might want to go and have families, might want to come back into the workplace. In the UK, we've introduced things like shared parental leave, which is fabulous um, to tackle discrimination, but also to support women in the workplace. But there's a culture change that's needed uh, to really make use of that new policy. The fellows are still uh, wanting to get to work and uh, um, uh, their other halves are, are still at home. So we have to, we have to change that. Um, so this is a complicated area. Um, but the starting point for really tackling these issues is good, transparent data. Uh, Minister, we also had the Prime Minister, Theresa May, here giving this uh, keynote speech this morning, talking about tax cuts, uh, talking a little bit about Brexit. Do you personally agree with the Prime Minister that the Chequers plan is the only plan that can work? Well, what we've been clear about is we want a deal, and the only deal that matters is the one that is going to be negotiated with her and her team uh, and the Commission. Um, but what we've also said is that we're not afraid of no deal. And uh, if, it's, if that deal is not right for us, we're ready for no deal. Um, we're, we've been planning this. I'm a member of the cabinet. I've seen our preparations. Um, some of the stuff that's been in the media, Operation Yellowhammer, all that, that is, sorry to sound like Sir Humphrey Appleby, but that is planning for people who haven't planned for no deal, which is not the UK. So if France or others aren't ready in that scenario, we have mitigations in place in the UK to deal with that. But we're ready. We're ready ready for any eventuality. And I was someone that supported Brexit. I think it's going to be fantastic, not just for the UK uh, and the, the developing world, which obviously I'm very concerned about. I think it will be good for Europe as a whole as well. Investors are worried about the UK crashing out, about a no-deal Brexit. Is it now 50-50, whether we get a deal or we don't get a deal? Or what's the probability? These are complex negotiations. And we're, there are so many facets to this. But as someone that's been involved with um, the, the areas that I'm concerned about, with development. People are really excited about the possibilities of having open instruments, how we can all work together in a much more effective way. Um, you know, this is not a continental shift. Uh, we're still part of Europe. Um, we really value our cooperation with our European partners. 
what we want to do is have that, that better relationship. We want to have the freedoms that we really cherish to trade, to control our borders, uh, to have control uh, over our money and all of those other aspects, uh, and really um, ensure that democracy is, a, is alive and well. And uh, I'm very excited about that. Boris Johnson, David Davis both resigned because they thought that uh, the government wasn't going in the right direction. Did you ever think of resigning? I think what we need to do is to support the Prime Minister. This is such an important moment um, for, for the UK and what we need to do is to ensure we get a deal but it is a really good deal and so I think uh, that the cabinet uh, feel that responsibility really strongly. Uh, we want to work uh, to ensure that happens but I'm very optimistic. I mean, a final question. Do you think we'll get a second referendum? Is it the only way to, to get out a second, of this? A second referendum is uh, a, a non-starter. I mean, the, uh, the anger uh, that would be felt uh, But it would from be democratic. Well, we've, how, many, how many do you want? I mean, this is a sort of classic, let's run uh, a question over and over again until we get the answer that someone else wants. We, we had a referendum. We don't have referendums frequently in the UK. Um, we had a referendum. The public agonized over this. I think it was the most politically engaged I've seen the British electorate for a very long time. They really thought about it. They did their own research. They were, they were really looking into it. And they decided, on balance, that they wanted to leave. Uh, not uh, through, you know, anger or... Uh, they, for positive reasons, because they felt that they wanted to do things um, that they were, their nation was currently be, you know, being restricted in doing. Um, so they decided we must honor that decision. Uh, we can't unpick it. Um, whatever our views, I was very happy with the result. I think most people in the UK, whichever way they voted, uh, believe in democracy and think that's the right thing to do.